And while they were at supper, he took the bread, he gave blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body. The same thing he did with the cup. He took it, gave blessing, and said to them, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant. Do this in memory of me. You know, Holy Thursday is the institution of the Holy Eucharist. But the Church, because she is in mourning of the following day to celebrate the death of the Lord, it takes out the solemnity and put it then after Trinity Sunday to celebrate with great solemnity this great precious mystery of our faith. As soon as the priest consecrated, he, he declared, this is a mystery of faith. And all of us say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. That's exactly what we celebrate at Mass. Christ dies for us, Christ is risen for us, and we wait for him. Every Sunday we come together gathering on Dominus Day, that means on the Lord's Day, to celebrate the coming of Christ to us. And if we look at the three readings today, they all speak about blood. In the first reading today, we saw Moses. After he went to God and received the commandment and came down and he was angry with the people and he broke them, he went back again and now he comes down the mountain and he said to them exactly what God wants from them, and that is to observe the commandments. And they say that we'll be we will observe them we will never throw ourselves again in idolatry, and we are going to do exactly what God wants. And Moses then built an altar, and there he offered sacrifices to God. After he read the Torah, after he read the, uh, the, 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 the degree of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, and then he took some of the blood that collected from the, from the offering of the bulls and, and the cattle, and he spread it on the Book of the Covenant. And the other blood, he sprinkled it on the people. The idea of the asperges that the priest bless us is coming from there, that we are blessed in order that we celebrate the great mystery of our life. And that is the immersion of the, our dying with Christ and rising with him in the font of baptism. We go in the gospel today and we find Jesus again at the Last Supper. Because this is the institution of the sacrament of the Eucharist. And there he is telling his disciples that he is going to the Father. But before he goes to the Father, he goes to the Passion. And that's why Good Friday and Holy Thursday are united together. One cannot be without the other. Why? Because Jesus said, This is my body, which will be given. And will be given was on the cross the following day. This is my blood of the new covenant. I now overturn the, the first covenant and now I make the everlasting covenant, the new and everlasting covenant with you and my blood will be shed. And you know he shed it through the route to the route of the to Calvary and there even on the cross. When when Genus, eh, a soldier, centurion, uh, put a, put a pair, pair, uh, uh, put into his side uh, a lance and from it came blood and water the birth of the Church, Baptism and the Eucharist. We are born to be fed by the Eucharist for a journey towards eternal life. And that's why he said, this blood will be shed. Why? Because this is an offering. So Jesus is a making a sacrifice of himself. What is a sacrifice? A sacrifice is something that we take and destroy completely in offering to God. It has to be burned or it has to be spilled. That is a sacrifice. And so Jesus become now the victim and also the priest on the hill of Calvary. Not only he offer himself to the Father, but also offer himself as a victim to the Father for the expiation of the world. And that's why the second reading today from the Hebrews is speak to us about that Jesus came, that by his blood he, ran, he took away the sin of the world, the sins of the before, the sins of today and the sins that come after. By his blood, he raised away our sinfulness and reconciled us to the eternal Father. And that he did that because he is the mediator. He is the one mediator 
the man God between man and God. And he did that so that we not only be cleansed, but also remind us that he is with us. With us in the meal that we celebrate every day on our altar. And that's why he asks us to do this in memory of him. Whenever we do the Mass, whenever we, we participate in Mass, we are participating in the dying and rising of Jesus. With one difference, on Calvary there was shed of blood, at Mass there is none. Now what is our response to all these readings that we also sang in the response of your son? This is the cup of salvation. This is the way we are redeemed. By this cup we have been redeemed. First and foremost, we remind ourselves that we immerse in this passion and death of Christ when our parents immerse us in the waters of baptism the day we were baptized. In that day, we immerse in the paschal mystery of Christ. We die with Christ and also we rise with Christ. And so that's why the paschal candle is in front of us today, to remind us that Jesus is, is the one that we celebrate he is alive. And because we immerse in that passion and that passion and resurrection in the day of baptism, now we have food that sustain us, that sustain us in the journey. You know that a baby cannot live without food. The same thing with us. We are born, but also we are fed. What is our response to this? First and foremost, we need to have great love for the Eucharist. And when I say great love for the Eucharist, it's not because you go to Sunday Mass, because it's an obligation. You go to Mass every time you can, even during the week. Sometimes, you know, you find people retired, and they say, oh, I have so much to do, I don't have time for Mass. But they have time to television, for two hours, three hours television. They have time to go and, uh, and talk in, 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 in gathering together, or shopping, whatever it is. Or even exercises, whatever they do. Or even hairdresser, whatever they do. There is a Mass, half an hour a day. Make sure that you make it a point that Mass will be very much number one in your life. Remember what St. Teresa of Avila says, Jesus is not anymore here, but he is in your hands, in your feet, in your tongue, in your body. Whatever we, we do, whatever we manifest uh, to, to, to bring Jesus in the world to other people, we are manifest that Jesus is still alive. That's the first one. We need to have great love. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Adoration is not if or but, it's a must. We need to come. He is a prisoner for us in that box, hidden behind that curtain, waiting for us to come, because he has something to say to us. And many people say, well, he never talked to me. Yes, he does. If you stay quiet, if you really open your heart to him, because although during the adoration you don't find any, any words of consolation, but God will, Jesus will make sure he provides a friend, he will provide a phone call, he provides a visit from somebody who gives you an advice on this problem you have, and that is the voice of Jesus speaking to others. Believe me when I tell you it is true. Number three, that the sacrament of the Eucharist is not something that we take it lightly. Many times we go to church, the way we dress sometimes is a, is a horrible thing. Number two, number two is the way we dispose ourselves. We come at the first reading, we leave at communion. That's what we do when we go to a meal to somebody. We go after the, 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 uh, the, the first plate is served, like the, uh, the, uh, the, the salad is served. And then as soon as we, ent and we eat the, uh, the entry, uh, we leave without saying thank you to, to the, the, the person who, who invites us. I don't think we do those things. So why do we do it at the Mass? The other thing is that we need to participate in Mass. Not sit in the pew like a log. Open the book, say the response. The church changed the Mass to be facing the people and also in dialogue and the same language of ours so, so that we have a dialogue with God. God speaks to us and we respond to Him. And we respond to Him in song, we respond to Him in words. And why? Because we are celebrating not our sacrifice, but we are celebrating the sacrifice of the Son of God who offered himself once and for all to expiate us from our sins. So this is the idea of the, of the Feast of the Eucharist. 
And many times, you know, the way we receive Him too is sometimes disgraceful. You receive God in your hands. Make sure you adore that God. You will receive Him on your tongue. Receive Him with great love. Take those few moments and thank Him. Talk to Him. And He will listen to you and He will really bless you and bless your family and the needs of your family. My dear people, this is what Corpus is all about. A meditation on the great mystery of our life. That Jesus is present in our altar under the, under the species of bread and wine. But although they look like, they taste like, but the substance is the divinity of Christ. The substance is the body and blood of Christ. We pray in a special way that our devotion to this Eucharist, our love for this Eucharist, will be intimate. So that our relation on a personal level with Jesus will bring so much fruit. So that what we do because of the Eucharist, we become like Jesus, broken for us. As he washed the feet of the apostles and he became our slave there. He showed us the service. We will be broken for others in service to do to others so that when we are called by, by the Father, at the end of our journey, we are going to be called blessed, because we have been blessed with this great gift of the Eucharist that now become reality, become visible, become tangible in the love we share with one another. God bless you.